Hello everyone, welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. Let's take a look at our karma here. I'm thinking maybe that might be a good idea, but look, before we do that, use calculate hit and range physical attacks. Probably be good to do that. So if we do that, that would be how many points? Uh, 13. That would take us out. Uh, no, we're not doing range. Dodge helps the chance to reduce the chance. Yeah, I really didn't focus on dodge that much. That's not so good. Strength. Main component used to calculate your chance to hit with melee weapons and unarmed combat. Increasing the skill unlocks special abilities. Yes. Yes, it does. So if we do this, we can increase that and that. Which greater than normal damage when using fists and stuff. Which is something I think is good. Um, if we are to do this, main component to calculate your chance to hit with adept powers. Can you quit magical resistance too? With the melee weapon, which we're not using. So, hmm. I think increasing the damage would be good. Absolutely. So let's do that. We're going to talk to everyone when we get the opportunity. In that room, I mean. Okay, what, Mr. Quath? Uh, show me the gear, show me the outfits. I need some cyber installed. Can you hit nothing? Okay, the gear. What do you have for gear? Uh, consumables. Hi, Sushi. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, I want one of these. And I want a premium med kit. One, two, three. Thank you. Oh, are you coming to cuddle a little? Let me move my phone out of the way. There we go. Yes. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. She's come to join us. Okay. Let's take a look at weapons regardless. Got some sweet ass weapons here. Wow. Dragon sword, a heavy, uh, a heavy war sword that can cut a metahuman in half. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna go with just these. And give me this one. Uh, trauma kit. Hmm. No, we're going to keep both these trauma kits, I think. No weapons. Confirm. Uh, armor. Can we improve our armor? High grade street armor.
Uh-huh. Taken off a dead ganger, which seems like a good idea at the time. Occult robes. No, 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 no. We are using Alley Punk, which is armor four. Grants hit points of plus three. I'm thinking Street Monk outfit. Out for the ultimate adept. And you know what? I think that might be the one that we want. Armor 7 grants plus one move and plus one unarmed combat. Confirmed. Although I do miss that, but at least we get to see her. See her face a little. Okay, that's some nice. No thanks, I'm good, Mr. Pawn. Thank you. Some very nice gear. Mary Lewis Telestrian. I was listening. It sounds bad. Yep. Thank you for everything. It'll be fine. I believe you. You look like you have a question. Yes. Uh, a few questions. Hmm. Why were you locked up at the Universal Brotherhood? Father didn't approve of my boyfriend, and he tried to scare him off. Something went wrong, and Harlequin ended up in a wheelchair. Sorry, Harkeem ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and lied to me about Harkeem. He told me horrible things. Her jaw clenched. And I believed him. My Aunt Lynn told me the truth about Harkeem and how my father lied. She preyed upon my anger and was so disgusted with him. Sorry, I was so disgusted with him. It was easy for her to get me to leave and join her new family at the Universal Brotherhood. Um... What did Lynn Telestrian and the Universal Brotherhood want with you? Aunt Lynn was very excited to have me there, almost manic. She talked about the inner circle and how I was to, and how I was going to be at its center. She said I would be their queen. The way she spoke, it was as if she'd seen God or something. Her eyes close, and she hugs herself tightly. But it's not God she sees. It's bugs. Only bugs. Was it Harkim who helped uh, you in the Matrix? She smiles in love. Yes, even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to hate him, he's still been watching over me, my angel in cyberspace, Baron Semedi. After we escaped, I told Hakim about the Brotherhood and about the bugs. It was his idea to steal Project Aegis so you could go back into the Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I don't know how he knew about it. Prince Semiji just knows things. So what did Hakim tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Nothing. I haven't spoken to him since last night. Why? What happened? He hasn't contacted you? No, and I thought he would by now. Did something happen to him? I'm sure he's okay. He was in the Matrix the whole time. That's what I thought. Harkeem is amazing in the Matrix. I'm sure I'll hear from him soon. I should go. Anything else? <clears throat> Is there something I can clarify 
for you. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Tell me more about Project Aegis. The Lesser in Industries Corporation has been working on Project Aegis for two years without fully understanding its use. Law Ferrer did not trust me with the information. My engineers finally met the Dragon specifications three months ago and had just begun the production process when my cousin Lynn hired Shadowrunners to destroy the lab and the facility, leaving us only the sample you stole. Why was Mary Lewis taken by the Universal Brotherhood? He pauses before answering. The host for the Queen is chosen very carefully as the interactions between the Queen and the lead shaman are critical. A family connection between the two roles is ideal. As you have discovered, my father's indiscretion with Melinda Watts, you know that you know that Jessica Watts, the shaman, and Mary Lewis are related by blood. I would appreciate if that information remained in the shadows. Of course. How do I use Aegis? My people have weaponized the Project Aegis formula by creating shells, which when fired propel, propel a high-velocity cloud of material which should be effective at killing exposed insect spirits. There are more effective ways to deliver Aegis, obviously, but time was of the essence, and I needed to improvise. Indeed. <laughs> now let's see what each of these people have to say. You nothing, Algeron. May I provide spells? Spear fo uh, foci, or fetish to help you on this critical quest. Uh, let's see what he has. Wow. I could just buy all these, you know, anyways. Got some interesting things here. And conjuring. And weapons. I guess one could focus a, a phys ed with also being able to cast spells within this game. Could be an interesting uh, route to take. <clears throat> I have some questions first. Speak it. Were you spying on me at the seamstress's union? His eyes widened at the question. You mistaken your importance, Valon. No, I was not spying on you until Mr. Telestrian summons. You were beneath my notice. I saw only a customer. Are you really here? Algeron's face takes on a dreamy expression. Are any of us? Yes, Balon. I am here, and at the Seamstress's Union, and a myriad of other places. On to the work at hand. Do you require magic? Who are you? I'm a peddler of magic spells, spirits, and foci. Nothing more, truly. No. Never mind, I gotta go. Okay, Hans Barkas. We did not allow many opportunities. Uh, oh, yeah, we did not allow many opportunities during our briefing for you to ask questions, Shadowrunner. You may ask them now. How did the insect spirits get here? When the membrane between the planes thins, the insect spirits reach into the mind of a shaman and begin their manipulation. Playing on weaknesses, 
and offering unlimited power if the rituals needed to bring the spirits here are performed. Omotsu shaman takes on an insect spirit as a totem. They begin an inevitable decline into insanity, slowly losing their humanity. Eventually, the shaman completely succumbs, choosing the... Uh, choosing the contentment and sense of clear purpose that being part of a hive provides. Perform your role. Serve your queen. That is all. If uh, Lofweir has seen this before and knew another was coming, why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycles of magic, the first insects are not due to appear for another 700 years. My lord Lofweir believed that he was well ahead of schedule. Something is different this time. It is concerning. Why do you think it's different this time? Perhaps it is due to the population of humans and metahumans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher. Or perhaps it is the density of the population coupled with advances of society and technology that has altered things. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures coupled with the density of information coupled with a new concept. The te technological presence of memory heightens a society's existence angst. A sorry, heightens a so uh, society's ex ex existential angst. God damn, this is tough dialogue. Thus, more people realize how truly horrible existence is simultaneously. That in itself may be a form of magic. Lofer is studying the question now. What is it like to serve a great dragon? The German man's eyes narrow. Do not misconstrue my relationship with Lord Lofer. I do not serve. I see. Okay, where do the insect spirits come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows, the, for lack of a better word, the distance between various planes of reality decreases. When the membrane between the planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be used to draw beings from one to another. I see. I should go. Yes. Good luck. There's one more person I would like to talk to before speaking with Harlequin. Hey, Mikulski. How you doing? You're gonna die, asshole. Maybe, but I'm gonna live first. Happy? We're all gonna die, Mikulski. Yeah, but you're gonna die screaming. He is so clueless. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Alright, I'm cutting through your office. I, I... Is that Steinway? Oh, please say that's a Steinway. That would be awesome if that was a Steinway piano. Baby Grand? Possibly a grand piano, actually, by the overall shape. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. <clears throat> are, you, <laughs> are you ready to get knee-deep in ectoplasm? I have a few questions first. Of course you do. So, who are you? I am he, as you are he, as you are me, as we are all together. Excuse me? 
He seems disappointed that you don't get his joke. You are excused. His brows... He, was, he bows with the floors. I am Harlequin, the light bearer. Last night of the crying spire. He who manipulates shadow runners and fights duels with assholes. For the next hour or two, I am at your service. I'm oh, sorry, what's the connection between uh, the bugs and the Universal Brotherhood? Uh, Harlequin's eyes glitter at the question. Oh, this one is genius. Genius! Talk about hiding in plain sight. Mm, sorry about that. That was uh, Faye. Um, this cycle, the bugs... Don't use some whacked-out shaman in a small rural village as their portal. They're thinking big. They set up shop in every major city, creating a major marketing campaign, and then began aggressively recruiting the dropouts, the disaffected, and the deranged. Just like any good cult. If Aegis fails, if we fail, the world will be absolutely overrun by bugs. It's brilliant! How do we kill an insect spirit again? Ah, the fun, gory stuff. Step one. Damage the bug using conventional weapons and magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Step two. Shoot the insect spirit using Project Aegis Launcher that Telestrian's people created. Step three. Keep shooting until either the spirit is destroyed or you are bug food. Rinse. Repeat. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, this reading does do a number on my throat. <clears throat> does Hans Brackus really work for a great dragon? He winks. No. I'm ready. Let's go stomp some bucks. His eyes light up. I thought you'd never ask. Aegis MK1 launcher. <laughs> I suppose you should know. Telestrian's techniques own, uh, technicians only had time to create a few prototype Aegis launchers. I'll be taking one, naturally. Another is for you. Treat her well. If you want additional bug splattering firepower, James has agreed to allow one of his personal elite guard to accompany us with the final prototype weapon. And now, let us, let us away. We have a date with that destiny, and she doesn't like to be kept waiting. Mm hmm. Okay, so select a runner. Now I am, because, oh, you know, Coyote, you are coming. And you are loaded. Oh, my dear. Yes. <coughs> Okay, so Harlequin what are you? Okay, you have a dragon sword and you have an Aegis rocket launcher and you have a bunch of spells. You also have that and that's a stim patch. Oh kamikaze, okay. And three of those. Alright. Now we basically have a street samurai with her. Let's see her cyberware. It's just her left arm. It'd be interesting to... Oh. Hang on. You are special forces of the Black Banner from the Elven Nation of... Ah, uh, Trey. You have a body. Your skills, I see. Inventory. Can't. You're coming loaded to bear. So we could have a third one, really. Which isn't a bad idea. We have this weapon, so we go hands or this. No problem. But. 
Part of me says always bring a Decker because you never know if you're going to need it. I mean, his pistol absolutely sucks, but um, cyberware is minimal, skills inventory. What You got that and that. Uh, honestly, it's a tough choice between the Decker and the Special Forces. But I'm going to go with the Decker because it just does seem right. Head to the Hive. Mm, shall we go? Sushi, why are you grimming my arm? You're grooming my arm. The hmm. The hunt begins. Your return to the Universal Brotherhood is anything but subtle. The team hits the same back door Coyote found, and you storm through. Quickly making your way into the restricted area and the room where you last met Jessica. And the first encountered, and first encountered the bug. You stand there together, listening to the sounds of chittering coming from somewhere distant. Harlequin stares into the darkness, humming tunelessly, while fingering the sword on his hip. When he turns, lifts his Aegis launcher to his lips and gives it a kiss. You give the signal. And the hunt begins. Okay. Now let's go through each person, even though we already kind of did that. We're going to make sure. Now we can give you... Sushi. What are you doing? Let's see. Uh, you have room. I want you to have this as well. Okay, you have a crap load of... Wow. Sushi. Really? What? Really? Okay, so we could have bought more and probably should have, but that's okay. Confirm. Game auto saved. That is that side door. The hand will fluffy or hotter. So we try that again, everyone. Actually, once we do this, I'm going to cut it, and it'll be a uh, two parter, I think. That side door you found last time. You're here was helpful. We avoided all those Universal Brotherhood spa cult yahoos. Telestrian was right. You're a real value add. Harlequin grins a wide predatory grin. Both sets of his pearly white teeth offset by the livid red lipstick around his mouth. Now the fun begins. Do we have any more questions? Of course you do. If you won't tell me who you are, will you at least tell me what you can do? See this sword? Yeah, it looks unusual. Can you tell me more about it? I can stick people with it pretty good, too. I also have one of those... Telestro Fleur Magical Bug Eradicating Launchers like the rest of you. That it? Is that not enough? Beyond the tattoos that adorn my face, I have another recent addition in a place that, that only those closest to me will ever see. It's a dragon. Don't tell Hans. Oh, and I'm a powerful mage as well. I forgot that. Um, how do we kill the insect spirits again? No, what can we expect to find down there? No, I think we'll just skip and just kind of go, I'm ready. 
and ready we shall be. However, we're going to stop here. So I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, thank you, Sushi. And I hope you'll join me again for another installment. I'm expecting the next one to take a long time. That's why. But until that time, please do be safe, everyone. Bye.